Hey guys, welcome to another live shave uh, for the Lather Games as we get the screen adjusted there. Um, today is basically Sterling Day for me at least because the theme is um, the whole set. Use a matching set. Aftershave and soap is the minimum requirements for using a matching set. But I found since I picked Sterling, I was able to use my Bort brush from Sterling. My uh, soap is the Meghalaya. I don't even know how close I am to the real pronunciation of that. I believe it's a clone of a Ralph Lauren scent. I do have the aftershave for that. And so there's my matching set. And then uh, I, I don't have the EDT for this one, of course. I don't think it was offered. Uh, if I, In retrospect, I could have maybe done Intrepid Man because I do have that, or I do have Dunsher, um, where I have the balm, the soap, and the cologne here. But, you know, I'm, I'm playing uh, the Lather Games this year without quite as much uh, obsession over the details. And so it's okay that I'm still using a Sterling product. So full Sterling today. Uh, so this is done sure to follow up with the cologne and it's a very easy going calm type scent so the wonderfulness of the meghalaya uh, holy cow the uh the scent of this soap i'm I, I stumbled upon it it sounded good i think maybe i got it as a part of a a, a bigger box purchase and it's one of those little diamonds in the rough where maybe somebody else didn't enjoy it but i love it and then hardware to finish off the shave, we do have a razor from Sterling. So uh, today is the matching set day. And hey, I am SMS. Welcome. <laughs> there we go. Sorov has his uh, cup of coffee and he's good. Let's do it. All right. Let us. Uh, this is the Sterling stainless and it has... The, I believe this is the Austin handle. We do have the uh, standard base plate in here. I have used this razor with the Nasset before, and it didn't do all that great. So I don't expect this to be a, a great pairing, but the, the games is all about using the right stuff on the right day. And so that's what we're going to do. Now, here is my Nasset. And if I hold the light right, you can see the N up here and the one down here that I had to etch into it. <laughs> yeah, man, uh, I can't either. <laughs> you know, it might. Hey, sort of, I just finished my stack for today's daily challenge. Uh, I put it on video. It's uh, 23 levels of soap tubs high. And then this equipment here for the SOTD is on top of that. It's and it's two columns of 23 soap tubs, and it uh, I got nervous. I was getting nervous about 70% of the way before I even put this stuff on the top. And I, uh, I was practicing on the side, balancing the stuff, and I had the EDT with the, with the stainless razor. Um, on the side down below and it was working, but I was so nervous and it was up so high because I brought in an element of danger. I did it on the balcony inside the house where I am. And there's like an 18 foot, 16 foot drop behind it. So those 23 times two soaps plus the SOTD on top were at risk. And <laughs> I was nervous. Uh, and so I ended up putting the razor sitting in front of the uh, the liquid products on the soap itself. So uh, that is going to be in video form and I'll put that up right after uh, I post this, uh, right after this video is done. All right. <clears throat> so man, yeah, my nerves <laughs> were working overtime right there. All right. Hey, Peter, welcome. Welcome. It's good evening for me, but good morning for you. Um, Oh, the scent still fabulous. A darker colored soap. The boar brush here is uh, taking a while to break in. He's still kind of um, 
got tons of backbone and not all that soft in the tips yet. Um, but we will, let's fill up my uh, 40 milliliter jigger. Okay, and all right, get my face wet. Okay, Danny, hey, welcome. All right, let's load up the soap. Sterling doesn't take too much time to load, a little bit, you know? And so, um, oh, uh, sort of, I, man, I've been dying today to check out that first Lather Games podcast. I need to jump on there and listen to that. Maybe I'll do that. I'll do that tonight, but I'm, I'm dying to get on there. All right. So I'm going to shake much of the water out of here. Uh, just in comparison, this is about a 25 use, 26 use bore. So it's still very young and I'm growing it up at the same rate as uh, some of my Samogs and Zeniths and a couple of Omegas. And so it is one of the ones that's very reluctant. As at 10 seconds, we start loading. Uh, let's go to, that's 10 seconds that we've elapsed now. Let's stop at 30, so just a 20 second load. I bet that'll be plenty. Uh, we got lots of drippage. So we definitely came at the soap with a wet brush today. Uh, and so this, this one, along with one of the Omegas, is being very slow to, uh, to break in, to get comfortable. Um, I think display may be okay, but he, the tips are still kind of not soft. And, and that's fine, because what if I get to 200 uses and some of the other ones that are nice now at 25 uses have relaxed too much. You know, that's something I'm very interested to find out. Okay, so let's start working on this guy. Oh, oh, see, I, I'm sorry. I don't know Celsius. Um, okay, so thir 34 degrees is hot in Celsius. Yeah, it's it's warm around here lately. Danny, I, I am kind of of your persuasion as well. I just like to use them. Maybe uh, if they're under 20 uses, maybe a little bit longer soak before the shave, but I just like to use them. And I think uh, my focus is just to have them break have those tips split in the most natural, safest way possible. That's my motivation with that. However, what I may do, I may pick out a cheap brush or two and subject it to all manner of shortcuts and abuses uh, because, you know, 10, 15 bucks and just see how quickly and you know, see what happens to it, you know. <laughs> Peter is of the same mindset. Tim, welcome. Oh, sure. Sort of was uh, broke a brush. He literally broke a brush. <laughs> We're talking about breaking in boar brushes, and he literally broke a brush. Well, as usual with Sterling, look, we've got uh, tons of great lather here, a little concentrated, so we'll keep adding water. Mr. Panch, welcome. We're using, um, as more and more have come, the soap and aftershave today are Meghalaya, a special release by Sterling to the South Florida wet shavers, I believe. And it's a clone of a scent by Ralph Lauren. And I love it. Matter of fact, I might have to do some research and figure out what clone it is and, you know, get it maybe. I don't know. Let's we'll see. It's got some, it seems like it's got some nice uh, leathery notes to it. Maybe a little bit of wood, but mainly kind of a leathery thing going on. It's got horse racing on the label cover. So that's kind of what, oh, ho, ho. Uh, 34 degrees Celsius is 94. Ooh, yeah. In Fahrenheit, that is hot. 
Oh, and humidity is the real killer, isn't it? Tim, welcome. <laughs> you know, I would consider this soap having a backup, but unfortunately it's, it's hard to come by because it was a special release for a local group of people in South Florida. And I uh, was not a part of that. I got it because I guess one of those guys who had it decided he wasn't using it or didn't like it or, or whatever. Sterling Lather is looking terrific. See, I think uh, sort of, I think I found, um, I think I did some research and saw that the Meghalaya is a place in India. Ah, highest rainfall in the world. Okay. Okay, gotcha. Hey, if, if I'm pronouncing it really horribly, if you could spell it out phonetically in the chat, it'd be nice to maybe start pronouncing it a little more accurately. It could be Meghalaya or Meghalaya or Meghalaya. Uh, Danny, when I am making my lather, um, I vary the pressure. Generally, a medium pressure, uh, maybe causing the flexing of the brush, maybe up to about the halfway point. Now, something to consider that's important is how much water is in your brush. If I have a brush that really has a tendency to absorb water, you've got to press it enough to be the same pressure that as the maximum pressure you might use on your face. Because I've had it happen where there was resident water in the brush that never got combined with the lather at this point, but then because of the pressure on my face, it released it. And so that's important. Um, and so, uh, but uh, I will vary it sometimes. Sometimes to get a good mix, I will kind of lift it up off the bottom where I'm just grazing the tips. And that kind of acts as a better stirring motion. Um, but right here, as I'm pushing the lather down from the sides, it's probably doing the half flex like I was talking about before. So just medium pressure, medium to light. And then if it's a really wet brush with lots of water that's hidden in there, I may do a small amount of work where I'm pushing it in with a little bit more pressure. <laughs> See, I figured out that Sterling, oh, look how good that lather looks. I have figured out that one tub of Sterling will last me 13 months of use. And I think I've got 20 tubs of Sterling. And so I'll, I could probably shave with just my Sterling tubs for the rest of my life. So yes, yes. Wouldn't that be funny if my grandkid, my grandson was using my soaps, right? <laughs> Megalaya, Megalaya. Okay, okay, Megalaya. All right, excellent. Thank you, <laughs> Tim. <laughs> Megalunga dong. All right. Oh, home of cloud. Oh, thank you, man. Home of cloud. Oh, nice. Okay. Well, of course, that makes sense. High rainfall area, kind of misty, perhaps. Very nice. Very nice. Thank you for the lather compliments. All right, now. Now, Sterling can take a ton of water. Let's look and see how elastic it is. Oh, look at that. That's what I like right there. That is some good stuff. And, um, and Sterling can actually take a little bit more water. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and stop right there. Because if I feel like it needs more water, I can just leave my face kind of saturated with water after each rinse, and that'll help out. That'll tweak it. All right. Oh, man. That is just right up my alley. Very masculine. Could definitely see some association. Now they've got horses on the cover. Um, polo. They're playing polo. Is that area of India known for its polo? Here's the cover. Megalaya, 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 Megalaya. Now, the, uh, this one may have tips that aren't really all that soft, but they're not too bad. They're not scritchy anymore. 
So they're right in between soft resident on my fingertips. I call that contact slickness. Hey guys, it looks like we had a little itch um, where it uh, disconnected for a second, but uh, the timer is running, so I believe we are reconnected. Oh, okay. Thank you, sort of. Not sure about Polo in relation to the Megalia. Peter using spray. Yeah. See, that's a great way to do it, to, to get water evenly across your face. Mm hmm Danny, uh, yep. Thinking about that, too. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, Peter, about the status there. I'm glad uh, the, the internet's not really strong here, I'm afraid. Okay, feels great on the face as usual. Nice medium scent. All right, Sterling. Tell you what, I love this knurling pattern on the Austin handle. I am such a huge fan. I don't like the the fact that it looks like a carpenter's hammer with this long skinny part right here. And I hold it right here. And I, I wish the knurling went up just a little bit more. Uh, but I just thoroughly, thoroughly love. And I may even keep this handle just because of that. The I did find the Dallas handle and it goes, it moves the knurling part right up here where I would grip the razor. And then there's a small knurling part down here. Um, I kind of wish it was thicker, but I think I'm going to like it better. Um, somebody once said that once uh, Rod sells out of these, he's not, it's not going to be coming back again. Uh, some of you guys may know that. Can anybody answer that for sure? <laughs> Sorov is the Aquaman of shaving. He gets ultimate hydration by hydrate by uh, shaving underwater. All right, here we go. This blade, I don't think, um, likes to have be riding the cap, and I think that's kind of what I normally have to do with this razor. I'm getting some some tugging here. Because of the wear of this blade, always using it on one side and using it so many times, I think that it is averse and doesn't give me good results if I ride the cap. Um, and so that may be why it's not a great match for this razor. But once you get through that first pass, it's not too bad. This will take off some of the stubble enough to then turn everything into a more comfortable arrangement. There we go. Um, maybe 24 hours since the last shave. Oh, did we flake out again? Okay, the timer is going. Maybe we're back. <laughs> yeah, Peter, go get your tea. Uh, you know what? Um, I did get a chance to use this razor with a normal blade and this standard head was, was probably right on my edge of tolerance in terms of aggression, but I think I might be able to find really shop around and find a smooth blade for it. Uh, and that's what I'm going to try to do. It is. Yeah. Uh, Rod was very clear about, um, uh, Rod was very clear about the razor in his write-up. Uh, we are, um, yeah, the timer is going, so hopefully our stream is uh, stable now. Uh, Rod was clear about the razor and how you need to be already shaving at some aggressive points, and he gave other razors uh, knowledge. Let me see. Uh, I might be able to start up my Wi-Fi on my phone. The network here is just not very good. Um, and, uh, I start up the, see if maybe I can transfer to my hotspot. You know what I mean, Vern? See, I'm showing my age with that, with that quote.
Okay, so I'm going to, Peter, how do you take your tea? Guys, if we disconnect for a second, just hang on. Okay, I believe we are on the new network. Let's, uh, this new phase of the shave is sponsored by T-Mobile Hotspot. So let's try it out. <laughs> Peter, he thought the hangups was because he, or because he's so far away. That's nice. That's nice. Oh, very good. Very good. Seamless. All right. Uh, okay, another pass. A little water on my face. Do you guys end up with spots all over your mirrors because of your shaving activities? Oh man, this lather's great. This is an aggressive razor. We'll have to see how, with its uh, not quite yet soft tips, feels at the end of the shave. <laughs> Uh, we were with Verizon for a very, very long time, and we appreciated its coverage map. When we had young children and we didn't want my wife to be stuck somewhere uh, with the kids. But now that the kids are older, we like the, uh, I love the unlimited data that we were able to get with T-Mobile. And there are a couple of uh, areas that we uh, would go at, would go uh, where we did not have good Verizon coverage. It was just kind of a little specific situation, but a friend with T-Mobile had good reception. And so uh, oh, unlimited data at a lower cost than Verizon because I got a uh, military discount is why we ended up switching. Oh, and also because the... Uh, you know, Verizon is CDMA network and uh, T-Mobile is a GSM. And uh, this is more applicable. It's easier to find GSM phones. All right. That is the second pass, cross grain. And we are mowing down some stubble. This razor is just taking it down a little slower than than others. They did build in some splay to this bore brush with the knot. And so even though it's got a good bit of backbone, it's already set to, to open up. And so it doesn't take too long before it's not killing lathers. This lather is perfect as long as I leave my face a little on the wet side, it seems. Third pass, cross grain. Ooh, see, I can feel it getting smoother and smoother as the razor moves easier and with less resistance. Here's another question for you guys. Ah, okay, Peter had to get out and get back in, okay. Here's another question for you guys. I haven't really heard this discussed very much and I saw one post online where a guy said that a lot of Badger brushes, if you use them for long enough, will develop gel tips with use. And so the fact that we use chemical agents to get those gel steps, chips going a lot sooner. We're trying to achieve that effect that previously was only available if you had put so much time into a badger brush. Does anybody know if that's true? Does anybody know if you just hang on to just John Q. Badger with enough shaves, if they do have a potential to get gel tips and, and to get amazingly soft, you know, over time, even if it's 20 years. 
Somebody said so online, and I'm really curious if that if that's true. This is starting to irritate a little bit as there's less hair to for the blade to work on, and so the blade's starting to touch my skin a little bit more. So I do need to keep with the light touch and the technique. Roger, yeah, yeah, five years. Um, yeah, third pass already, sir. Just finished the third. I had two cross grains for the second and third pass. Yeah, I'm thinking five years isn't going to do it. I'm thinking it might be more like 12 years or something. It needs to be a really long time before they do that. All right, let's check out the closeness, see if we just can, if we can stop. Okay, I'm happy with the face, the cheek closeness. All right, let's try and against the grain right here, and that might be that might be good. Man, I've been up late submitting my posts right before the deadline for most of these nights till like 2 a.m. Just what we night shavers have to deal with. <laughs> nice. Nice. The real badger. One of the things I thought about, and I'm going to say this on my Sterling day, I thought about doing the lather games with only Sterling soaps. Because obviously they've got a huge inventory. I've got a lot of Sterling soaps. I've got a lot of samples from Sterling. I wonder how many days. I mean, obviously I wouldn't be able to do some of them as, as Sterling soaps, but um, you know, that, that'd be a neat way to play, a neat variation. Okay, now here's the against the grain pass. Um, not over here, not quite yet. Let's just kind of finish this up. All right, let me rinse so I can figure out which side has that little, the ding in it. The ding is right here in this corner. So I'm going to use the other side for this against the grain. And I declare my hairs just must be laying close to the skin because this is not enjoyable. And I often cringe when I'm watching somebody like uh, HD Shaves or, well, I mean, everybody goes against the grain on, on YouTube, right? Um, so many guys do. It's, it's uncommon to find somebody who doesn't. And I often will cringe when they do their against the grain pass, when they start, because I know for me, that would be, I would be bracing for some, some pain. But for other people, it's just not like it is with me, I guess. My hair is, I don't, I don't know quite why. But yeah, that does a good job there. Um, definitely plenty of hairs there that are now flush, uh, fl cut nice and flush with the skin. Let's uh, maybe go through and, yeah, see, this is much nicer now that I've done it once. It's easier to go through and, yeah, that's nice. That's nice. Uh, was a nice feeling, but it's a nice close cut. <laughs> That's right, <laughs> Gary. <laughs> Gary did Williams. <laughs> Gary Thaw. <laughs> now, Peter, I don't know if you knew this or not, but it was revealed at the end of the Lather Games last year that Gary Thaw was actually another shaver in disguise. Did you, did you read about that?
Zesty Calco, welcome, welcome, sir. We uh, just finished up with the shaving part. Uh, I did three and a half passes, and we are using the aftershave and soap. Megalia, Megalia, um, a Ralph Lauren clone from South Florida Wet Shavers, limited edition there, that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. And it's all sterling. I used a sterling bore brush. I used a sterling razor, their stainless razor. And let's now use the Megalia splash and we'll see if I generated any irritation. Ah, yes, yes. Um, Gary Thaw. Um, Gary Thaw is an actual person over on like Badger and Blade, but on Reddit, it's a different story. There was a very cool drama last year at the end. Uh, feel free to go and search and read up and follow the story and you'll get a real kick out of that. I think maybe I, I would do you a disservice if I spoiled it for you. All right. Ah, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Peter checks it out when he is uh, at the shave to maybe see if, before he goes against the grain in some spots. Sure. Yeah, understood that correction there. All right. Oh, man. Oh, oh, there's some some depth to the leather. Oh, it's even more realistic. It's almost like I can, I can smell the, the saddle leather of the horses. Maybe a little bit of amber. Oh man. Oh, that's so, that is so, so good. There are just some like this Admiral, this one, um, Texas on fire. Oh, that I just, Dark fall that I just love so much. Just hit me in just the right way. And this is when I lucked into, I would have never sought it out. I didn't even know it existed, right? So this was just a little happy, happy coincidence. Now, oh yeah, mm, maybe a little bit of smoke. I don't know, probably not, but it kind of feels that way. And it looks like the 20 seconds. I tend to overdo it with sterling because it is such a nice concentrated soap. And so today I stuck with 20 and it was perfect. And the lather was perfect. It was, it was luxurious. I could have added more water if I wanted, but I just left some extra water on my face after the rinses and that uh, made up for the difference. Very nice, man. And we've put another use on this bore brush. Uh, and I do work it out on the towel afterwards, not violently. Um, I mainly, I don't do circles. I don't want to twist the bristles. And this is just my guess. This is not authoritative. Um, I do more like a karate kid paint up and down thing. And then I'll turn the blade, not, the brush 90 degrees and paint up and down with it. And, and that way I get good flex in all directions. And uh, we're getting the water out of the brush to prevent mold and mildew, that sort of thing. All right, so, um, you know, it was aggressive during that against the grain pass. It was not enjoyable, but it was the kind of aggression that doesn't linger at all. It's gone after the action is done, and especially after you have a nice cool water rinse. And so, you know, if I had to do that every day to get a shave that I needed to, uh, it, I'd probably get used to it, right? But I don't need to, because uh, normally I'm not using... A, a long blade. And speaking of which, today is use number 384. 384 today. Um, it looks like the 23rd of June is when I'm set to hit 400 if the blade allows. All right, so I'm going to clean up, give everybody a chance to. Uh, this is definitely my third lather games. It may even be my fourth, but I know it's my third. At least. Tim. 
One thing I like, things I like about this, um, these bore brushes that have a good bit of strength and backbone. When I'm cleaning them in the in the bowl, rinsing them out, giving them a good workout to get that water up in there, I can just really work at them and give them a good scrub. <sighs> How many austere Augusts have I done? Well, I know that I did it in 2018. I believe that was my first one because I chose to use Williams and I don't believe I did it in 2017. And so the NASA that I'm using today was in my first uh, austere August that I did. And I've used it every austere August since then. Um, my intention in that first one in 2018 was to use, I was really enjoying fine accoutrements, classic hard pucks. And so I wanted to use Santal Absolute the whole month, but I had a logistical problem. I ended up staying longer at uh, uh, my parents' house. I was taking the grandkids to visit them. And instead of returning back home where my Santal Absolute was, I had to figure something else out. And in my bag, I didn't really have a soap that I wanted to use for the whole month. And so I was able to find a puck of Williams at a local grocery store, Ingalls, in the uh, in the South. And and that is why I used Williams for the first time there. And uh, and I but the NASA was on purpose uh, and I did have it with me. Um, I had I hadn't heard very many people use NASA's in the shave of the days and things like that. It was it was not a very publicized blade. And I was getting, I used it uh, half a dozen times before the lather, the uh, austere August. And I was just getting such great shaves with it. And I thought, well, let's bring attention to this blade and use it in the uh, austere August. And I, I hopefully it'll last the month. <laughs> so there we go. Zachary, welcome. He's from California, from the, from the West Coast. Welcome. You are joining us at the end of the shave. Um, and I just, uh, I've been cleaning up. I'm answering questions now. I Oh, and let's go ahead and put on the Sterling guys. Um, I didn't have a very good impression of the Sterling colognes. And then I changed the way I was using them. I got some good advice. I started spraying them instead of on my neck area. I started spraying them on my wrists. And I noticed that they were hanging around a lot longer than before. I was able to enjoy them for several hours. Uh, and each scent is a little different, but it's just about, I was going nose blind when I had it around my neck. And when it's on my hands though, I it, they, they come in and out of my smell range. And so I can enjoy it for a lot longer. So take that for what it's worth. Give that a shot next time you use a cologne that you really like and see if maybe you like it better and are able to enjoy it for longer. You know, I wouldn't be surprised if the NASA hung on for another austere August um, because that is uh, that is just a month away after the Lather Games end. And I think I'll probably want to enjoy non-marathon blades for the month of July, perhaps. Um, uh, we'll see. We'll see. Uh, and then use the NASA for this austere August. I'm sure I'd be able, I'm guessing I'll be able to. So that's a very good idea. Yeah, Zachary, I'm, I'm glad for the replay. Hey, a quick announcement. Um, if you make a comment on the live replay, it doesn't appear in my comments area along in the same area as the normal video comments. And so if I don't get around to it, uh, within a couple of weeks, 
and you still would like a question answered, please feel free to jump on any other video, a normal non-live video and post a comment there. And I'll be glad to answer it if at all possible. Um, uh, they just haven't, they haven't merged the two comment areas, it seems. And I have to go into each individual live video uh, replay to look at the comments and I may, something may fall through the cracks. Oh man, yes, that sandpiper. Oh, you know what? Um, I don't have that in the EDT, but now that you say that, I might have to, I might have to get that. That I could, I am a big fan of that soap. I I do have that in the splash. Yes, Ben, I bet that would be a great clone. Ah, okay, Peter playing around with the Nassets lately. Yeah, it's really funny. Some other commenter left a message just a day or two ago that he got some Nassets in, tried them, and they were just too rough for him. So it's just subjective. And just give every blade, every popular blade at least, a shot and see what resonates with your style and, and with your skin and all those things. Peter, I'm glad that they work for you. Uh, I've definitely heard some people reg regard them as uh, sharp like a feather, but smoother and last longer. So hopefully it's a, a benefit to you. <laughs> the spirit of austerity. That is true. That's true. Yeah, I'll have to. That's something to think about. I usually think about that all through July. Um, what soap to use. Um, and one of the things I think about is, do I want to use like a favorite soap for austere August? Like Diamond from Barrister and Man, one of my all-time favorites. Admiral, um, this one. Would I want to potentially make myself annoyed with it by using it so often, you know? Or save it for more cherished occasions, you know? And pick something maybe in the middle ground, who knows? So... Last year was MDC because I was just so curious as to how many uses I would get uh, with that soap. And I solved that myth. Um, I solved that mystery. It wasn't a myth. I solved that mystery. Zachary, for me, the Balzanos were very rough. They did not impress me at first. But somebody else, a respected other shaver, loves them. I decided to give one a try. And here's what I, here's what my motivation was. If it was a little rough for me at first, I wanted to see if it smoothed out with some more uses. And then what if it became a great blade after 10 uses? That was its sweet spot. Maybe it started out a little bit rough, but then got better. And so I've been, I do have one I'm playing around with. So yeah, play on, get yourself a pack of Balzano's and and try those out. Um, Tryablade.com is where I usually turn for that kind of thing. Uh, very, yeah. Okay, Peter reports that for him, the Nassets are smoother than a feather. A tough to use soap. Now that's a good idea for Austere August, a tough to use soap. Hey, Let's take a second. You guys, do you have a soap base that you think might be good to hit for 30 days? Um, probably not a particular soap scent, but uh, a soap base or a, an idea like Peter just suggested that I could think of or find a soap that was really tough to use uh, and, prob and then use it for austere August for the, probably the purposes of taming it, figuring it out. That's what I did with Williams back in 2018. And then in 2019, I used uh, Midnight Stag to do the Midnight Stag Challenge to get a dogwood brush, accomplished that goal. And then in 2020, I used the MDC to test the longevity of it. Colonel Conk. <laughs> now, I'm a Colonel Conk fan. I have three soaps from Colonel Conk. And I enjoy them. They make a nice lather. It's an underrated soap. and uh, But it is kind of a running joke, especially over on wet shaving. Um, but you, it, it gives you a slick lather. It's a nice glycerin soap. And I would enjoy Colonel Conk for a whole month. You know, I could maybe joke about it for a month. But, uh, but that's an idea. Um, 
another idea I've had is a soap that, um, uh, so it's a soap that's tough to use might be nice. Uh, something like Colonel Conk, a joke soap almost. Um, or what if I brought notoriety to a joke soap? Um, one that wasn't taken seriously. And if I used it for a month, I could, you know, let people know that it's a serious soap. So that's an idea. Um, I could do, I've always wanted to do fine accoutrements, uh, a hard puck, just to enjoy that for a month. Uh, oh, a non-shave soap, right, right. Um, I've also thought about an underrated soap, a soap that's really nice, uh, maybe a good cost, a nice, uh, like sterling, a nice effective cost, but great performance, uh, just to bring, uh, bring it out, uh, to, to show it off to people. Uh, get, spread the word about it. So that's possible. So I'll think about that. Uh, in my normal videos uh, in July, feel free to jump in with a suggestion if you think about it. Um, yeah, Hakime, a, uh, a bar soap. Um, uh, I have tested several bar soaps on my channel. Irish Spring is a decent lather. At the Dollar Tree, you can also find um, Yardley Shea and Buttermilk Soap, wonderful lather. Sugar Soap Works, another nice creamy lather like the Yardley. Pears Glycerin Soap, the one at the Dollar Tree has kind of a licorice or medicinal smell, and it's a glycerin soap, but it makes a nice lather. I've got videos on, on that online. Yeah, Peter, I figured that's what you meant. Yes, sir. Yeah, um, uh, some people have combined like Williams with Dove, you know, things like that. But I like the uh, um, the Irish Spring is not as creamy, but it gives a decent lather. Dial soap, same thing, uh, decent lather. Um, but of course, the Irish Spring comes along with a nice scent. Uh, a lot of the other ones don't have uh, as nice of a shaving scent, and the Irish Spring definitely has that. Very cool, guys. Okay, let's look at the water. I could have used more than this. I ended up using 15 milliliters. Sterling, I often will use more than that. But that was today, 15. I've did, I've, I have did, I've done the spray. I'm not getting a conflict with the Megalia and the uh, Dunsher because the Dunsher is very easy going and it might have one or two pieces that it's blending. It's not clashing. A favorite bath soap. Yeah, that's a good idea. You know what? Something I've dabbled with for austere August is committing to face lathering. Austere August. Trying to get just really good at it. It's frustrating for me because of how wet I like my lathers. And face lathering makes it difficult to achieve that kind of, of wetness without losing the lather. I don't think I'm going to do that, but that is something, an idea I've been playing around with. Uh, okay. Uh, you're right, Peter. 15 milliliters is not a lot at all for me. That's right. Okay. So the Sterling Razor. Uh, I may be bringing the high aggression head to the lather games. And I can do that because I have a whole different razor. And you you can't um, you can't get that different razor point. There's a point that you can earn if you use a different razor each day, but switching just the base plate does not earn that point. But I found a good deal on the, and because I thought that the Dallas handle was going to uh, not be made anymore. I went ahead and pulled the trigger on a whole other razor with a Dallas handle, and it happened to have the high aggression head. So I could bring that, but that's going to probably be worse than this guy, especially with the old Nasset. Um, and so I may bring that in the lather games, or I may save that for a more normal shave with a, a more normal blade. <laughs> Peter, I think you might be right. I think you might be right there. I might go crazy. 
Uh, also to let you guys know, just in case you don't, if you have a brand new razor and maybe you don't know if you want to keep it or you might sell it, uh, or you're just anal retentive about the tiny little circles that sometimes get made near the bolt there where the handle comes in, you can get a number 10, at least in America, that's what it's called. Um, you can get a number 10 nylon washer and it will fit right over there. Um, some people like it for the fact that it might offer some binding and locking uh, and cause less pressure to be on the threading. I don't know if that's true or not. For those of you who don't know, here is the makeup of normally I can't hold stuff close to the uh, phone um, when I'm recording, but this is a Chromebook, so it's different. The bottom of the Sterling razor is just flat. It does have etching, which is cool. And then you flip it over and oh, look, there's my Sharpie dots from before uh, from my Nasset. It's got the rail in the center, of course, to keep the blade perfectly aligned every time. No need to check for adjustment. And notice the, the central area here and these two bevel panels that go quite a good distance toward the edge of the blade. And so that's going to help it to be secure. That's going to help it not to be too loud and scrapey as it moves down your face. And I am found finding that to be the case. And so the top cap is, uh, has the grooves to receive those rails and not much else. They didn't really finish the insides too much and that's fine. That would have increased the cost, right? So, and I, I do enjoy that they put those uh, ridges there just to make something a little different. All right, guys. Ah, a trial in July. Yep, that might be worth, that might be worth a shot. Who am I kidding? In austere August, I think with, I think with the chiseled face midnight stag as well as with the Williams, I did a a portion of face lathering. I know with Williams I did some, uh, and so I think I know how that's going to turn out. <laughs> All right, guys, I think we're going to sign off. Um, it's been wonderful hanging out with you. And uh, man, I look forward to it every day. Thank you for joining. Uh, Peter, have a good rest of your day over in China. And uh, uh, I don't know who's uh, still here. Um, we talked to people from California today, as well as some different places. Thank you so much. You guys have a good night. Um, if you have something, an urgent question, you can go to one of my normal videos, not a live one, and post a comment. And I'll see that. That'll come to my attention a little quicker. Uh, all right. Uh, take care, guys. We'll go ahead and end the stream. And um, tonight, look forward, uh, if you are curious, to the stacking video that I'm going to put of my 23 tiered high soap tubs and then with the SOTD on top. Thank you so much, Peter, Hakime. Take care, guys. Good night.